Yes, Ron Washington, very much so. Uh, a hero last night for the St. Louis Cardinals. And, uh, yeah, that's about all we can say there. Incredible <laughs> stuff. With his, uh, with his decision to try and suicide squeeze with the bases loaded and one out. Wow. A decision, by the way, that he wanted to take zero responsibility for yes. after the game. I don't think I have ever heard a big league manager throw a player under the bus quite in the way that Ron Washington did last night to Luis Guillorme for a call that was, to me, pretty cut and dry, Ron Washington's decision to make, and he should be taking the fall for it. And he said, no, 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 not me. Here's, <laughs> here's that clip in case you missed it. Guillorme missed it, but why did you want to call for that? Lefty on lefty. I didn't you know, sink a ball left-hander. I didn't want him to hit into a double play. He can handle the bat. He didn't do the job. It wasn't anything I did wrong. He didn't do the job. Oh, boy. He didn't do the job. That is incredible content. Thank you. Anything I did wrong. Uncle Ron Washington, thank you. Thank you for the content today. Wow. Wasn't anything wow. I did wrong. What, you looking at me? No, 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 no. I didn't do it. How I every mean, yes, of course you would suicide squeeze with the bases loaded. Every single manager would do that. That's never on the manager. He called Come for on. this, right? Like he yeah. he explained his rationale, which is neither here nor there. I didn't think it was a good call, but when a call like that doesn't work out, it's managing one oh one, you have to you have to wear it. You have to own it. And yep. especially under the circumstances, Jojo Romero in that eighth inning last night for the Cardinals had walked two to get the bases loaded and one out in the first place. One of the walks was on a pitch clock violation because I think he was a little bit too preoccupied with the runner at second base. That was an unfortunate spot, but all the more reason if you are Ron Washington in the Angels to just make JoJo throw strikes to you. And he's not in a position where he's been doing it. So lo and behold, when you call for the suicide squeeze play, the the pitch is a foot and a half off the plate and he couldn't get a bunt down, which I get it. If it's a suicide squeeze, like you have to find a way as a player, maybe to get, it. but come on, Andy, like there's no way to bunt that pitch. That's a tough bunt to get down. And if you didn't make him do it, it would be a two and one count. And Jojo might be well on his way to walking the third batter in an inning. And that one would have tied the game because the bases were loaded. Just a crazy decision-making process. And then to dig deep, and double down on it is something that I just never imagined seeing last night. It was so crazy. The Cardinals broadcast on Valley Sports Midwest played it. They 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 got yeah. wind of it going on, and they said, <laughs> oh, on. we're going to air that on our postgame show, too, yeah. because that's hilarious. And then later on, Ron Washington saying, well, he was being questioned like that because the pitcher was a little wild. And he's like, wild? He was throwing strikes <laughs> as if he hadn't walked two of those guys and everything else that he did, as you mentioned before, Brandon. Like, as if Ron Washington didn't see any of that from JoJo Romero in that particular inning. Yeah, I don't know where Ron Washington was last night, honestly. Like, where was he? <laughs> Off I in don't the clouds. You, yeah, seriously, I don't know. They call it La La there. Land for a reason. I think Ron Washington was there. I think he was there. During the game. Just unbelievable. Gosh. It was hilarious, Crazy. and it was huge. It was huge because it took – it, it bailed out JoJo Romero when he didn't have his best stuff. Yes. Right? Yeah. It, it gave them a free out and a free strike on Guillerme. I don't think that should be lost in the conversation either because he ended up striking out. Big difference in a 1-2 count and a 2-1 two, count in that spot. Even bigger difference when you know your infield can back up to normal depth. You only need one out. You don't have to try and do anything crazy defensively, and he's able to put him away with a strikeout. I, w one of the most pivotal moments of the Cardinals season to this point, and I understand where they're at in the standings. I get it. They're, they haven't climbed this mountain yet, but they've won three in a row. We finally saw the thing that we asked for yesterday, Andy. What did we demand on the big show yesterday from the Cardinal offense? What did we say yesterday we wanted? Get to early. the dang start. Early runs. Do it early. Yeah. Have a plan. Turner Ward, come up with a plan they can execute for Reed Detmers. And I'll be darned if they didn't do that last night. Got to Reed Detmers yeah. in a couple yeah. of early innings. Charges him with five runs, four of them earned. Took advantage of defensive miscues by the Angels as they are Boy, are they prone to make some defensive miscues. They're bad. They're team. bad. They're, they're bad. They're team. bad. Let's say bad ball club. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah. Just terrible. So, I mean, the, take advantage of that like the Cardinals did last up, night. Uh, beat up on the bad team. That's what you're supposed you to do. That's what you're Especially supposed to do. when you're in the spot that you're in, you know. That's what you have you to do. Anything else. They didn't do it to the, the White Sox the other week. That's a problem. I mean, no. to do it now, people are saying, well, it's the Angels. You're supposed to beat them. I know. 
But they were supposed to beat the White Sox, too, and they didn't. So this is progress. I don't know if it changes the conversation and the tenor of the talks that we've been having about this team in a full season context or in a is the manager going to be in place for a while context? Is the hitting coach good? They've had four consecutive games with double-digit hits, and now over the last two games in particular, they've been able to turn those hits into an amount of runs that is acceptable. They score seven last night. They win at 7-6. In an ideal universe, you don't need Ryan Helsley on the Sonny Gray start when, you, when you're spotted a 5 nothing lead, but you know what? Sonny's human too, and he made some mistakes last night. There's no doubt about it, but the Cardinals to be able to still come back and not let that get to him, and they win the game. Boy, oh, boy, are we seeing some good things from Alec Burleson. That was a good, gritty win by the Cardinals last night, Andy. Well, again, when they have scored early, sometimes they have not been able to uh, keep leads. Uh, Maybe when the starter blows up and they're unable to find the counterpunch, the Cardinals found it yesterday. And so, I mean, Alec Burleson providing that hit, that's, that's one of the better hits that the Cardinals have had this year. I mean, would you agree? Big swing, it's two run one of homer. The bigger swings that you could have so far in a season like this, the way that it has gone. Because of the game circumstance and, and the way things were trending, 5 nothing lead. How about our guy Pedro Pajes coming up with his first career big league hit? And it comes in a great moment. Home run. Well, no, bases loaded double. Okay. All right. Okay. That would have been a grand yeah. slam. Yeah. Home run. That's yeah. coming. Maybe that's a prediction, Andy. Maybe, Maybe. That's, yeah. that's what's coming next. No, it was the double down the third baseline, clears the bases. Adds to that 2 nothing lead, makes it 5 nothing, And in that moment, I was like, are the Cardinals going to win consecutive games with Ryan Helsley not needed? Because that was the other thing we kind of talked about yesterday was, hey, offense go, spot Sonny some runs, and you can probably coast to a victory in this one. And they had the formula down for the – they had us in the first half. And then – Not going to lie. Not going to lie, they did. But what did you think about Sonny Gray and, and sort of the issues that he had, particularly in two strike counts, he was leaving pitches over the plate? I mean, it happens throughout the course of a game, it, it, and even to the best pitchers. It, we cannot just discount what Sonny Gray has done for the first uh, five, however many starts it was for the Cardinals. I mean, you are going to have these up and downs. Every single pitcher and every single Cy Young candidate, for that matter. I'm not saying that he is right now, but he could still be in that conversation if he has pitched the way that he's pitched so far this year. It's going to happen every once in a while. The hitter's going to figure something out. I mean, I don't think it's anything of, of Sonny Gray tipping a pitch. That If that were the case, it would have happened yeah, a lot earlier. I don't know. And there were so some people I, that were wondering if that was going on, if the hitters maybe had an idea what was coming. But to me, I don't, yeah. I don't think that way because I look at the pitches where he got burned. 94 up and over the plate for one of the RBI hits in the fourth inning. Yeah, and then the homer. Mistakes. The yeah. homer was 93 middle in. It's just they, they were two pitches that caught too much of the plate. And I liked it from Pedro Pajes last night after the game where on the Bally Sports postgame show, he said, look, in that on that home run pitch to Ohapi, I probably could have called for something different and Sonny probably could have. Like, that's that's on both of us to, to put ourselves in that spot. And one that I think comes as a learning experience. Now, it, I, I like that he's taking accountability for calling a pitch that that you put the pitcher in a bind to execute yeah, it, and he but doesn't execute it. Than, home run. Than Ron Washington would have done. But. Well, and, but it, and then it was interesting to hear Pajes also say, though, like, I think he would have, if he had it to do over again, he would have shook me off. That's interesting to hear, not because I don't agree, but because I think it speaks to maybe the level of candor that a young player feels like he can have in conversing with Sonny Gray about a moment like that. He said, we talked about it afterward, so it's not anything that Pedro Pajes was – throwing Sonny under the bus to say, yeah, he probably should have shook me off. I don't think that was his exact phrasing, but paraphrasing, that was the gist of what he was saying. Uh, I I like Pajes, man. I think defensively he had a really good night blocking some pitches that I don't know if Herrera or even Wilson Contreras blocks. His framing is really good. We talked a lot about framing. I think there was one catcher's interference that happened in the game. Uh, Luckily did not break his arm on it, but just very a big game for Pajes. Alec Burleson, three hits, a a double and a home run as well included within that. With Wilson Contreras down, there's going to have to be some guys on this offense that step up, and for Burleson to per- perhaps be that guy would be a blessing, man, to to get that from this the middle of this Cardinals lineup. He batted fifth last night, OPS up to 742. That's highest on the team. <laughs> like, there are still some things. Wow. It, outside of Contreras, that is the highest Cardinal OPS of the regulars. So a lot of, lot of work to be done for the offense yet, but you're starting to see some guys come around slowly but surely, and is it going to last? Are they turning the corner? I don't know. But regardless of if this is just a blip on the radar playing a bad team, you got to finish off that bad team. 
on Wednesday night. You have got to sweep the Angels, get that first sweep of the year, and feel really good coming into Bush Stadium on Friday, taking on Tyler O'Neill and the Red Sox. Big game on Wednesday night, if you ask my opinion, to be able yeah. to to take advantage and, and not only come in and say we won a series on the road, but to say we swept it, we, we took advantage of a team that's just not very good, and we're better than them, so we went and beat them three times. That's what they have a chance to do tonight. We'll see if they can do it. You can tune in starting at uh, 710 right here on KTGR for Cardinals and Angels tonight. I mean, I, I sure hope it's the case because, look, if you are still holding out hope, that's fine. And they, they these last few days have shown that that's, that's fine to still have hope for the Cardinals to turn this thing around. But there's n- almost no margin for error. Because going forward, you have to you have to put together a a, a a very much above average run, like eight of your next ten or uh, whatever it might be, uh, to even get back to five hundred. Right, like that's the hole you're in. So even a stretch where you're winning half your games for the next couple of weeks is not going to be good enough. You tread water at that point, right? right? Yeah, you're, the time for treading water is done. You have to now start moving in a direction and uh, this is the perfect opportunity to do so if you get a a win tonight you have good vibes again crossing uh, all those states back to st louis to uh to open up a home stand and you get an off that day could set, that helps yeah too, and like, an off day feel rested it can set up really well you don't have to worry about that spot for mats uh filling with bullpen guys things like that for at least a few more days but it it sets up really well if you can win the game tonight, and then you're just five under five hundred instead of Not seven. A great right, exactly. That's the key. Like, like the you can, swings. How here. good do you feel about winning a series? Well, you always want to win series, but they have to make up for the series that they've lost to this point and the times they've yeah. been swept. Like you know, they they had a rough week. They lost seven in a row, winning three means you've won three of your last ten. That's not good enough. So you can't. I, it almost will take away a lot of the momentum and s- kind of put them back to ground zero if they can't finish the job against the Angels on Wednesday because then you'll be like, okay, we still, you know, three of our last 10, three of our last 11, It wh- where, do, where do the gains come from? When you have big losing skids, it's best to make them up real quick with big winning skids or big winning streaks, rather, because you could do it. What are they? They're 18 and 24. If you went the next 100 games and played six games above 500, We'd be at 500 with the, the the 20 game sprint to the finish yet to go, and that probably does put you in the mix. But that's you want to do it definitively early, so that there's no question that the Cardinals are going to be around. And I think if you're Ollie Marmel, you'd really like it to be that way, so that people can stop talking about your job because they were talking about it over the weekend. I think to some extent, understandably so. I don't know if it's rightfully so, just because I don't know if that was going to be the move that saves the Cardinals. But I think when you lose a bunch of games in a row and you're in the spot that this organization is in, it's hard not to think in those terms. And so I, I, I think it was on the table if they continued to slide with three wins. Now, is it maybe a different conversation? I think especially if they go ahead and beat the Angels, you can say, all right, let's see if this little dynamic that's starting to build can cook for the Cardinals now if they can sweep this team by winning on Wednesday night behind Lance Lynn, who has to throw more strikes. I gave you my keys to the game yesterday. Get a lead early against the opposing starter. Cardinals did that. Hopefully you can coast by Sonny Gray. They didn't quite do that, but they found a way to win anyway. My key tonight is Lance Lynn's got to throw more strikes and record an out in the sixth. He's only done it once, and it was April 16th, almost a month ago. Every other start has been five innings or fewer by Lance Lynn. He's got to do it tonight because he used up Helsley for 18 pitches on Tuesday and on Wednesday, or in that game as well, you used up JoJo Romero for over 30 pitches. You might have one inning from Kittredge tonight. Maybe Helsley if you push it just because you know the off day's coming on Thursday, Andy. But they're going to need Lance Lynn to give him six. That's kind of what he was brought in to do. We haven't seen it from him. The ERA is pretty good still for Lance. But I think tonight's a night where he needs to give you length as well in in the start. It'll be key. And if the Cardinals can get that done, they'll have a four-game winning streak. And that's a nice thing to have coming back home. Again, nothing, not everything is fixed. But even another one more losing streak like they had last week makes it tough could be the <laughs> yeah it could be the tipping point be that we've been talking about like yep. it, that would be it 
And so uh, that's as close to the edge that the Cardinals are right now. We'll see if they can get uh, further away from. By the way, though, they're seven and a half games back of the Brewers. Just if you wanted to know, wild card wise, it's not actually that bleak. They're two and a half games back of the team that yeah. is in the third wild card spot. <laughs> that's Mike Schultz Padres right now, who are below yeah. five hundred. The NL right. in, in that wild card category is up for the taking. The Cubs and Braves are looking like bona fide playoff teams. Uh, I know the Braves are going to be. We'll see about the Cubs. They're five games above five hundred. Everybody else is kind of in that soft, cushy middle waiting to see who's going to emerge. Forget about Miami. Forget about Colorado. Every other team in the NL could conceivably make the playoffs. And the Cardinals right now are dead even with the Reds at 18 and 24 and their percentage points behind the Pirates. Cardinals win another game tonight. Maybe you're in third place. Like, that's a real possibility here for the the way the standings are shaken out. Um, They've got more sights ahead than just that, but it would be a nice start. Finish off a series and really be able to say definitively, like, no, this wasn't just a blip on the radar where we took three of four on the heels of, you know, losing for a week straight. We went four in a row, and now there's an opportunity to to really see the, the light at the end of the tunnel on being able to climb out of this thing. That's what could be at stake on Wednesday night. Yeah. So, again, tune in tonight, 7-10, and then 8 o'clock first pitch here on KTGR as the Cardinals try to go for the sweep against the Angels.